Hi and welcome to another book talk. This time I'm going to talk about the Xiao Lu Guo's, a concise Chinese English dictionary for lovers. And uh, this one is another good book. So I've read two books by Xiao Lu Guo so far, and uh, I would say both of those books. Uh, the first one was UFO in Her Eye. Those two books uh, by Xiao Lu Guo that I've read, they seem to have this、uh, metafictional characteristics to them. That is to say. The way that the stories are conveyed in each of these books, they are not just conveyed based on what the story says, the content of the story, but rather it is also conveyed in how the stories, the chapters are presented to you. I think that that's probably the reason why this book really works for me. Even though I would say at the same time that this book is not the perfect book. But it has this really, it has this something that is really sparkling, something really special to it. It feels really unique. That it just, it just feels like something that you would、uh, either be turned off by or something that you would be, you know, attracted towards. And I would say that I,、uh, my response to this book、uh, was of the latter. And ah,、uh, this book just literally. Suck me in. It drew me in. A concise Chinese English dictionary for lovers is about a main character named、uh, Zhuang, but she calls herself as Z because apparently a lot of people can't really pronounce her name. She is a young woman from、uh, a small town in China, and、uh, she is、uh, traveling to England. And the reason she goes to England is because、uh, she's. Learning English there, she attends、uh, a school to learn English, and she's going to learn English for about a year. And when she first arrives in England, she does not have、uh, the, a very good ability in communicating in English. She does not speak good English, and、uh, she is having a hard time trying to adjust herself to the life of the English people, of、uh, of the environment in England, how things are in England. Not long after she arrives in England, she meets a guy. They just become lovers. They become partners, and you know、uh, they have a relationship. We start to see Zed's story and her experience in England, and how、uh, her relationship with this guy evolves over time while she is there, you know, attending the school. And there is also a portion of、uh, this book that. Talks about、uh, Z traveling for a short while、um, outside of England, where she goes to different countries, neighboring countries like Spain, France, and we also see a little bit of her experience in all of those places. So all in all, this book is pretty much about、uh, a person's experience going to a totally different territory, a very foreign territory. Totally new place. So if you are the kind of person who has that kind of experience, you would probably be able to relate to this character. The meat of this book is about a character who goes to a different place, learns something about that place, but especially more importantly, and this one I think everyone can agree is the best thing ever, learns something about themselves. And so this book has tons of character development, especially for the character of Zed. It feels like this book is this、uh, really classic、uh, voyage and return story where you see a character coming from a place that is very familiar, very complacent,、uh, very、uh, kind of boring in a way. You know, the status quo, and she goes to a totally new new place,、uh, something that she has never experienced before, and she goes into all of these adventures, meeting different people. Doing different stuff, you know, getting different kinds of challenges and obstacles, and she returns as you know, typically as a totally different person. And this is the kind of book that you know that really follows that that kind of convention. So if you are the kind of person who likes that kind of story, this book is really for you. One thing that I said earlier is that this book kind of has this、uh, characteristics of being a metafiction, you know,、uh, and The form of this novel is really interesting as well. It's something that I personally feel really amplifies the punchiness of the story. So the first thing is that this book is、uh, divided into different sections, on, and each of those sections are titled with names of、uh, months, and there are、uh, the the sequence 
are in the you know order such a way that months are ordered in a year and the chapters they kind of just uh, imply suggest that uh, the time that Z spends in England and that is about one year and within those uh, chapters there are also like sub chapters and each of these sub chapters uh, they have titles uh, in one word title and below that there is a definition a dictionary definition of that particular word which makes sense because this title of this book is you know Chinese English dictionary so it makes sense that it has this like really dictionary feel to it and uh, what I find personally interesting is that each of these subsections also tells us the story of Zed's own personal experience relating to that particular word and so we not only see the dictionary uh, definition of the, uh, the word but we also see Zed's own personal interpretation and experience uh, for that particular word and it makes this book feel even much you know richer another thing I find super super interesting about the form of this novel is that this book is written in broken English mostly broken English you also have parts written in Chinese that is of course going to be translated later supposedly by the editor and it is really interesting to see this kind of form and how it kind of contributes to how the story feels really um, really enriched it makes the story feels really it is you know it is so easy for you to feel immersed into the writing seeing the way that the narrator you know that is the narrator of this book the way that the narrator is re retelling this story in such a honest way it feels really honest because it is presented in the way that is talking you know she comes to England she does not speak uh, grammatical English and we get that kind of narration we get broken English narration which really tells you how um, she talks how she communicates but at the same time also how she must feel inside you know communicating this way and how she reacts to the world I think that's really interesting but there is something happening with that particular aspect of the form I'm not gonna talk to you about what it is I think you might be able to predict what will happen in this book but you know I'm just gonna leave it at that um, if you want to know more um, maybe you could try this book so like I mentioned earlier this book is probably uh, not something that I would consider as super perfect it has some parts that I would say is a little bit unrealistic not that I mind so much about unrealistic bits in books anyway but this book takes place in the real world so there is this kind of sense that you know it, it does not need to be realistic but it, when you read it sometimes you just feel like it this naggy feeling that it has to be realistic even though it doesn't have have to be like that but you know I, I kind of find it uh, fun to just kind of read this book uh, in a totally different way basically you know you could read this book as a realistic piece of fiction but for me, I prefer to read this book as some sort of a urban fantasy, a very, very minor fantasy or, you know, a, a, a realistic book with a little bit of fantasy added into it. There's this sense of fantasy and the fact that you acknowledge some parts in this book, especially the ones that involves various sexual encounters, various adventures uh, experienced by Zed as elements of fantasy. And it would work because, you know, honestly speaking, a lot of the adventures that Zed experiences in this book feels kind of um, over the top. But overall, I would say that, you know, reading it that way, it kind of helps me to enjoy the story more. Another thing that I would like to point out, which is, I think is kind of interesting, but not a lot to say about, is that this book is really funny. Um, if you like funny writing uh you know this book is something that you probably want to try funny narration in terms of uh you know awkwardness experience uh by people uh who have language barriers with one another 
So yeah, that is the kind of funniness that you could expect from this book, you know, language related blunders. So overall, this is probably one of the best books I've read this year. It's really wonderful and uh, you should check it out. So I guess that's it for a concise Chinese English dictionary for lovers by Xiao Lu Guo. For now, let me just say that this book received a five star from me. Lovely book. And uh, I'll see you again in a different video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching and bye bye.